Danica, you are our favourite representative of Women's Rugby League, because we only know about two. Um, <laughs> any ideas when you're going to be playing? No. Did you ask me the other day? I messaged you the other day, and I was like, are we community game or not? Because we've had this kind of, we're essentially the community game because we're not paid, but the level that we play at makes us elite. So therefore, where do we stand? And there's a lot of discussion about, do we need all the testing, which means none of us will be able to play because the clubs can't afford to, you know, put toilet roll in the in the toilets at the minute, never mind, pay for the women's testing, which is not deemed particularly um, important part of the game at yeah, the current situation. Um, but there is, there's a new thing about the community game come out and that could we see an eight-week league from October, you know, through to the end of November, um, and I think there's a discussion about whether we're allowed to have an actual structured league versus just having friendlies. It doesn't matter at this rate. I just want to play a couple of games of rugby. I am so over Zoom sessions and online training. And we met up the other day. Um, quite a few of us. There was a, there was a big enough big group of us. And we met up and we did our fitness session together, which is great to see. Obviously, because I doubt it. I have I've indulged in lockdown shall I say a lot and was and I've come back from a, a hamstring tear and um, so last Thursday was my first sprint session that I got signed off to do and it was nice to see that actually I'm not that unfit as unfit as I thought I might be um but it was great to see all the girls and then we ended up we played a game of you know Courtney brought a, a cricket stuff down we played a game of cricket loosely because none of us are particularly brilliant at it apart from Courtney and Francesca um, and it was just great to be around the team again. And I think that's reminded me that, you know, it doesn't matter whether we have a structured league or not. It'll just be nice to get a few games under the belt before we close the season and then restart pre-season. But no, there's nothing, is there? I mean, you probably know more than I do. Um, but I just want to play a bit of rugby. Yeah, as you say, that eight-week season seems to be the uh, thing. Congratulations, two years of holding the Challenge Cup as well. Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> One day, me and Phil will tell the full story of that day, which was uh, full of hilarity behind the scenes. Phil uh, and Pete Smith and the Yorkshire Evening Post nearly getting thrown out of uh, the uh, Halliwell Jones Stadium before they even got in. Brilliant. Which, which was good fun. Um, spe- speaking of, and of course, that was my career highlight of being on the BBC. Uh, they've done a survey today. Uh, elite British sportswomen have spoken out about horrific abuse on social media, 30% say they've been trolled. Uh, are you one of those, Danica? Uh, trolled as in? Well, I don't know. People saying bad things to you. I mean, people say about bad things rugby, to me all about... the time, but I don't think it's my rugby. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I got a comment in the gym the other day. You know, I was lifting some, I was doing some weights in the gym because the gym's open and I'm back in my happy place. And I lifted some weights and this guy was about, I don't know, he was lifting a lot lighter than me and he just turned around and was like, oh, you're a man. And I just went and picked up some heavier weights and I was like, mm, okay then, hon, and carried on. It, you know, it happens. It's Some men are a little bit um, threatened by athletic women, shall we say. <laughs> well, but of course, you do, you do now have Claire Balding representing you as the uh, new president of the RFL. So the women's game is actually going to be bigger than the men's by uh, the end of two years time. Yeah, you hope so. And, you know, her inner statement, it's about developing the women's game, which is fantastic. So come on, Claire, get your finger out and let's start pushing us to get us back and figure out where we're going to start. You know, and I think what is really key going into next year anyway, with the world cup is, is a point, but just in general, you know, there's we're we're on the we're riding this wave for the women's rugby. We were in a great place. We were building, you know, um, with Claire coming on board anyway. We, we got the whisper, you know, we heard about earlier in the in the year. This season was set to be bigger. You know, Betfred came on board. You know, the the potential for this season was incredible. Building up to next season, you know, we need to really find that momentum again. And I know there's so many problems in our sport now, and financially, and and where we go from here, but. You know, that side, the women's game has, has managed with very little money before, and I'm sure we'll do it again. But we just need to make sure that we can build back up and and set the, the platform for the World Cup next year. And apparently this BBC survey did involve some rugby league people, but it was anonymous, so we don't know who. But at least it was involved. Um, they didn't receive any responses from equestrian, motorsport, shooting, taekwondo and gymnastics. 
Although I think as we've seen in the news recently, gymnastics uh, has a lot of problems it needs to uh, to sort out. Interesting fact here: uh, most sports have been earned less than the national gross annual wage with a third earning nothing. I earn less than the national gross annual wage as well, and probably some should say I should earn nothing. But uh, there you go. Yeah.